Hello ladies and gamers, it's Splinter here, and today we have a bit of a spicy debate. In fact, lately I've been going on a bit of a debate spree. Um, I've got tons of recorded debates just waiting for me to show you and edit hopefully. Um, if you want to know, there's this debate. There's the debate with Timeless about the Arkham series um, in which I debunk all of his criticisms in under 20 minutes. It wasn't very hard. And then after that there's Yaks with uh, he... He made a lot of criticisms towards Arkham Knight, and obviously as a big Arkham Knight guy, I, I defended to the best of my ability, and that went on three different times, and there might be a fourth at this rate. So uh, that's a long arc. It's a, it's a very long arc. But if you do have the time, please, it would mean the world to me if you could check out my Ultimate Defense of Batman Arkham Knight Part 1 video that's up on the Splinter channel. I just released it um, as of this video being posted, and then also go check out my Ginger Fiction channel, which I have a very special series coming. Either it's already out or it's going to be out very, very soon, in which the first part of it's released. So there's a lot that I have to offer as a creator, per se. So there's that. Now, let, let me also say, as a disclaimer, I don't have anything against Colin, although I do think he is a bit silly at times. He, he is a silly goose, you know. Pimpin needs to pay attention a bit more, you know what I mean? So for context, uh, this was during a Disagreement Day livestream a long time ago. Sorry, uh, look man, I move slowly, okay? And during this Disagreement Day, one of the criticisms brought up is that I could debate Colin and the others on Invincible's animation. So that's how it ended up on Disagreement Day. So by the way, my uh, phone can connect to the internet while my computer is very bad at it. So I have to make sure all the VC that I'm on is always on my phone, which sucks, but it is what it is. I uh, hope you enjoy. Um, this is should be shorter than it looks. They had to bring somebody else to argue for Colin, right, Colin? You know, funny enough, after all this, Colin went to brag later on in, in one of his future videos and say, all I've seen are Nick picks talking about Invincible's animation, but Colin said this. I don't... <laughs> I don't really know how to, like, refute this. Like, I, I mean, all I can say is nah. -uh. Oh, oh, sorry. Colin, can you say that again? I don't... <laughs> I don't really know how to, like, refute this. Like, I mean, all I can say is nah. -uh. Colin, just, just one more time. I, I couldn't hear you, I swear. Like, I, I mean, all I can say is nah. -uh. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Anyway, um, again, I love you, Colin. Uh, he's starting to warm up to me a little bit more. I've always been a big fan of SK and the others, so... Anyway, I'll let the... I'll stop my rambling and let it play out for you. Okay. Uh, hello, Splinter. Welcome. Hey, uh, my, my disagreement will be real quick. And by the way, guys, I, I'm coming with a redemption arc, okay? I'm trying to make an, uh, an Arkham Knight Ultimate Defense video, so that, that'll yes, be good. Yes, let's go! <laughs> Yellow, that's crazy. Well, it'll be good. I, I promise, guys, but I need time to do it. Um, but I was just going to say real quick, I know Colin in particular, when I watched his video on uh, Invincible Season 2, he got super, not even super defensive, he just said casually that, like, the animation in Invincible is actually really good. I, I think I disagree with this. Um, lately, I've been going down the like anime and animation rabbit hole, and I gotta say, Invincible like animation just feels very, very... Like, in particular, it's art style. Like, the art style is very flat. Here's a good example. Um, when fighting Levy Armstrong in that one fight, you know, the desert apocalypse place, the art style, I feel like, doesn't really change as much as it, it as it could. Like, a good example of this is being, like, uh, My Hero Academia Season 6. I know, it's a very messed series. But, uh, uh, the 6, when... Mess series, excuse me? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, we'll come back to it, okay? Um, but the point is, is that when he goes on this vigilante arc, it feels like the whole art style changes. My Hero Academia is, like, very, like out there with its colors and it's very it's a very colorful show but as soon as it gets to that dark arc the whole coal atmosphere kind of changes and it's not the same thing in invincible the only time where invincible really does something where the atmosphere changes is is during that time in season one where omni man um fought those aliens and it was all red and black like that's that's good but i feel like that doesn't uh as, that's very rare and not as often as it could be and the last thing, I guess, is the animation itself. I think it's very slow and janky. Like, in particular, when the characters are talking, they feel like they kind of move like robots a little bit. Uh, another good example is the Invincible Season 2 teaser. The teaser does so much better of a job just, like, trying to make um, the animations look more unique instead of just looking very robotic where they just kind of slightly move their shoulders or, like, move their heads slightly down. It feels like it's uh, very cheap, honestly. 
So, if anybody disagrees, um, I'm open to it. I don't. <laughs> I don't really know how to like refute this. Like, I, I mean, all I can say is not off. Like, I don't really. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like saying the soundtrack for this movie is bad. It's like I don't. I don't know what to say, honestly. It's like I think the art style looks good. It's. Uh, I don't think it's like. I feel like your argument comes from the point of comparison, which is like already. I think I think that's kind of flawed. I think I can get into that because, like, let me use an example. Let's take uh, let's take like Spider-Man PS4's web swinging. Mm-hmm. Let's say there's five more Spider-Man games that come out and blow it out of the water. I don't think that now makes Spider-Man PS4's web swinging like that. You know what I mean? Um, honestly, I I, I think I disagree from that standard, but I'll. I'll... I'll meet you halfway because, like in general, like like let's just take example, you know, Batman Arkham and Arkham Asylum and Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight basically makes like Arkham Asylum in terms of pure gameplay almost totally irrelevant. Um, I I still say sure that's like a very good job and it was very progressive for its time, but at the same time we still got to compare here and it's fine. Um, but going back to your original argument about comparing, we don't even have to compare to other animations. We can literally just compare stuff from the comic book. I've been going through uh, the whole thing recently and like like the the time when Omni Man says he misses his wife at season two and you look at that exact same panel in the comic book, it looks way better. Like the lighting's better, the stars shine a little bit more. But everything in the Invincible TV show just kind of looks like this flat, mundane, you know, not as much artsy as it could be. Even the designs, I think, were pretty meh. I think, I think comics inherently will have better art, looking art style mm-hmm. and, uh, like, you know, stuff with their characters. Because with animation, it's a lot harder to keep it consistent. You need, like, a bigger, a way bigger budget for that. I don't know what the budget is for Invincible's animation, but... Uh, like when it's more detailed, like the animation is more detailed, uh, it's obviously gonna look worse than something that's like one panel that you don't have to animate. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Oh yeah. yeah. Like to, I guess for point of comparison, if we compare, let's say, Spectacular Spider-Man TV show to I don't know a John Romita uh, Junior drawing, it's like yeah, I think the John Romita Junior drawing is gonna look more detailed and. Um, it's going to have more depth in the drawing, for sure. What I'd also say is, uh, I think a lot of this does come down to budget, like like Colin said. Because, I mean, let's say we want to compare uh, any of the Spider-Verse shots to uh, to a comic panel. I think a, a comparison could easily be made there. Um, maybe even Spider-Verse looking better. Yeah. So, I think well, it really does come down to only like two and a half hours, right? Compared right. to Invincible, it's like six hours seven hours or something well i think it, it more so comes down to like budgeting overall or how much you're investing in into the animation itself um i feel like it really comes down to um with what they with what they have i guess did they do a competent job in uh in making the animation come to life um and i can't say i haven't seen invincible season two so that's just for you two to decide. Oh no, SK, come on! You're supposed to be the chosen one, you should know. Come on. Wait, what What do you mean? I was just like, I, I thought I would disagree more with, um, you know, maybe your take on Invincible Season. I was hoping I would get to debate you as well. Oh, that's a shame. I was hoping you just watch no, it. No, I got time. nothing for, for Season 2, I haven't seen it. Aww. <laughs> Alright, well let me just pull up like a... Uh, go in the watch together, Splinter. You see the link? Uh, okay, hold on. Um, um, SK. Yep. Go on YouTube and look up Angstrom. Look up Angstrom versus... <laughs> look at my stream. <laughs> Firstly, look at my stream. Secondly, because I got the copyright block screen. And, uh... Sorry, what are you asking me to look for? Okay, actually, I'll just I'll just pull it up. Just look at my stream real quick. <laughs> uh, thanks. I oh, should. Invents. The fuck? I have that muted. So. Uh, Invincible season two. Uh, Mark. Where's Ang? Um, so FYI, 
my spoilers for anybody watching, if you haven't watched it. Um, let's just pull up this. Uh, how do I put it in again? Oh, yeah. Uh, Alright, I added it to the playlist. Okay. Um, so, no, you can see it, right? Yes, I believe so. Uh, yeah. I so, like, I'm, I'm just, like, trying to, like, figure out where where is this, like, robotic-looking character movements and animation. Because, like, if you're comparing it to, like, I don't know, like, real life, it's obviously going to look like janky compared to like a real life that, person moving because like animation normally works on like twos. Uh, uh, okay, okay. So to make to make a better comparison point, there's this really cool um animation technique called rotoscoping. Have you heard of it? Um no. Okay. I don't so know what you're talking about I just don't know specifically. Okay, so basically what they do is that they have somebody there like with an actual camera and they record somebody doing like motions, right? Sort of like the same yeah. way um, video games uses motion capture for its cutscenes as well. But they're just doing that as a, flame, uh, as a frame for reference and then you get this incredibly fluid and gravity looking like uh, kind of animation. Like you can see this a lot in Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man's got to be one of the best like 2D animated things, period. Um, even the walking animations look absolutely excellent. Um, but I think, let me see, uh, another example that I have on top of mind is when Omni-Man, um, talks to Mark about, you know, all the insects getting killed and stuff like that, and he's debating with himself what, um, why he feels this way. You can kind of see that kind of janky movement. Um, I would, I mean, we can go through the Armstrong fight if you want to, um, and we can kind of break it down if you want. Yeah, go ahead. Play it, let's go. Alright. I'm just gonna have it muted. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pause periodically for copyright shit. I'm All not right. gonna do a cover because it might defeat the purpose of showing, like, the motion. Mm -hmm. So, is there a specific part you want us to see? Oh, uh, just, like, play the fight, pretty much. I mean, we can skip uh, to the part where they start flying in and attacking if you want to. Okay. Is this meant to be like slow motion here? Yeah. Okay. Does he see blood bolts in slow motion? Shut the fuck up, you too, buddy. <laughs> uh, you guys are showing a scene. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. Like that. Figure. Like look at like look at him. Uh, like like that's what I'm saying. I'm like, you see him like hitting that rock right there. Go back. Go back. That's good. Uh, hang on a sec. Um, I gotta figure out. God damn it. Ooh, I got an idea. So what I'm gonna do? You see, I'm like hitting that rock and falling. Like I don't know how that's not fluid. Well, I think the action scene. Show it again. Show uh, it again. Yeah, I showed again. So like, well, this is one more, right? He goes against that. Oh, this fight was sick. And... I love this fight. Oh no, I'm I'm not gonna say it's bad. I just think, like, it, uh, I feel like he could have been spun around a bit more because of that gravity. But it, overall, I'd still say like, sure that. Um, hit in particular looks kind of good, but I feel like, I don't know, I, you know, if they're gonna go with a cheaper art style, I feel like they should do what Bob's Burgers did. Um, Bob's Burgers kind of just throws out the idea of choppy animation, period, and goes with this very fluid-looking everything, basically. If you've ever seen Bob's Burgers animations, you know what I'm talking about. There is almost, like, zero, like, frame cuts you can see, um, and the frame rate goes extremely fast and looks extremely smooth. I feel like if they were doing this cheaper art style with only eight episodes, I think they should um, do that to make it look a bit more fluid, you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean because I've never watched that. Um, I got, I, can you not, this is why I hate like arguing about animation like and how it looks. This is like, all right, um, like, what do you want me to pull up Bob's Burgers or something real quick? Uh, I mean, you could. There's, like, a few musical stuff. I mean, you can look at it if you want to, or you can just take my word for it, either one. Um, but I, I think that... I mean, I just want to I just want to hear why you, in particular, think this animation is pretty good. Like, even the Armstrong and Leggy fight, I feel like could be choreographed a bit better, you know? It shows the brutality. I personally, in this, but... Well, I think it's 
think the background art is beautiful in like almost every shot in the show. I love the background mm-hmm. art. Uh, and like a certain, in terms of the characters, I really like this like simpler art style. Like obviously more detailed stuff is mm-hmm. going to be uh, it's gonna look better. But right. I, I think a simpler art style, it, I always like. I like it still. Like there's a lot of shows with like pretty simple art styles. Like uh, like look at uh, Smiling Friends for example. That show that looks like a, a little kid's drawing, and I still am like, yeah, this this looks pretty cool for an animation. Uh, okay, so I mean, Smiling Friends has every animation that you could think of, very highly yeah. detailed, even has live action stop motion. Well, not just that. I was gonna say that as well because it has so many different kinds of animations. You're absolutely right. Um, but there's also the fact that Smiling Friends, in the context of the show, is supposed to be like a comedy. So it makes sense why a lot of comedies are like low budgets and doesn't look as good because it adds to that comedic material. However, when we're talking about Invincible, Invincible, I think we can agree, takes itself pretty seriously and is meant to be taken seriously, correct? Yeah. I think the animation takes itself seriously. Yeah, I think, like, you look at, like, Spectacular or, like, like Spider-Man, right? Like, it's kind of got, like, a similar, if anything, less detailed art style, and I still think that fits for what the show is going for. Well, then again, in when we're talking about Spectacular Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man sure has, like, you know, pretty basic looking, but I think it still looks better because of the character designs itself, you know what I mean? Because, like, Spider-Man's got extremely good detail. Um, like, all the design, like, even Eddie Brock. Eddie, Eddie's got the, you know, broad shoulders, the big arms, but, like, kind of the shorter legs. Like, it's all meant to serve more of the character designs. That's more, uh, that, yeah, it, you know, draws from the comic. the same thing, though. Eh, but kind also, of... that's, that's not really motion. That's more so like the character designs themselves. Mm-hmm. How I think I would say I prefer, most, I prefer most of the character designs from Invincible. Mm-hmm. I'm, not even, I'm not even a big fan of Spectacular's art style, but I don't think the animation is bad. Yeah. I think, I think Invincible like, has a better art style and better character designs than, fan, like, than Spectacular overall. Alright, well... I mean, I just think that Spectacular Spider-Man has, you know, better designs that go with its worlds better, you know. I just wish that um, Invincible took maybe a bit more creative liberties or, like, you know, use some time to experiment. Like, uh, I, like in particular, I feel like it could be exploring more with different colors. I do agree that the backgrounds look good. The backgrounds 90% of the time look great, especially some of the flying scenes. Um, the flying scenes, I, I'd agree that it looks pretty good. And then again, someone, this is Invincible. Uh, wait, wait, but... uh, someone in the chat said, I'm kind of tempted to join this combo as an animator myself. Oh, uh-oh. Interesting. Yeah, I'm going to get in trouble. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, also, Matt Hodgkinson, if you, wanna, if you have a disagreement, read the description. All right. Well, I'm interested. That'd be um, cool. Or, to... Hey, if you're on at 9 CST, I would like to join because I wanted to make Colin on like a Batman. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. Who said that? Skids. Streaming for four oh, hours. I'm if so we don't excited. get enough disagreements, we can just talk about it in private. I don't care. Because I don't want to stream oh, I, for, I, like, I think we'll get enough. No, okay. I want blood. I want blood. <laughs> we'll, tell, we'll tell Skids to join quicker. Skids, well, please. Um, I will do anything you ask. I will be your... Like, draw blood uh, right now. There's, well, so there's there's two ways this works, all right? One is that Skids chooses an earlier time, or that we get more and more disagreements, leaving enough time for Skids to eventually get around to nine CS. I mean, I, well, I if, everything, if, if everything else fails, we'll have to yell about Spider-Man 2, Colin, eh? eh? <gasps> I mean, I have a... I have oh, a my God. Like, no, like, Splinter Jesus. just gave me the idea. Uh, Splinter, so, My Hero Academia, what? Oh, um, overall, I think, uh, everything is pretty good, I'd say, until Dobby's Dance. I feel like a lot of consequences get removed. Like, in particular, um, earlier in the show, it's like, if you use your arms too many times, Deku, you're gonna damage it and you'll never be able to use it again. But after that Dobby Dance fight, it's like it never happened and the whole shoot style is kind of thrown out the window. I also have an issue with how many abilities Deku gets, um, in Season 6, because he goes from, like, mastering one quirk for, like, nearly the whole season, then near the end, mastering the whip and kind of float quirk, um, but then he gets able to, like, um, move, he gets to use the kinetic energy, sorry, um, the kinetic energy he can build up, he's able to make smoke screens, he's doing all kinds of stuff, and 
I feel like overall uh, so they're kind of explain. He explicitly hasn't mastered, and he's only used Bajin once. Mm hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's my bad yeah, then. He, he only. Oh, no, he, he uses it like twice. Mm -hmm. But you gotta. With Bajin, it's an easy one because Bajin just works really similarly to like one for all. Mm -hmm. So it'll be easy. that will be easy for him to master and. Screen, it's established that he does make mistakes with it. You, you see this with the muscular fight. He um, actually makes mistakes with uh, the quotes he's not as used to. Hmm. Well, it's been a while since I watched the show, but I am looking forward to the new season, so I'll definitely keep those in mind. Um, but I don't know. I did, I did overall, I, I did enjoy My Hero Academia, honestly, you know. Um, just not as much yeah, as the end. I, I, I'm a defender of the the vigilante arc, and also the like. Oh, it's just a way to use his legs less, like use his arms less. But that's something he doesn't use his arms at all, as well as um. One second. They actually do explain the um the arm. One second. They establish it as basically the fact that because he's had one for all for longer, he's adapted more to the quirk. He's, uh, he's literally become more durable in that time. All right. One second for you. Um. I rarely use Discord, you gotta figure out how to DM. Just like, find, just get, when you join the server, just like click on my name and you should see like a send message button or something. Or just ping me, or just like at me in my server, like in general or something, and I'll uh, DM you. Alright, but I, I was gonna say that I do actually like the Vigilante arc. I mean, I may not like some of the stuff around it, but I do actually like the Vigilante, like seeing Deku being pushed to the brink of where he's, he's basically drawn as like this monster. And like the cities overturned with this black clouds and everything. I like I really I like the vigilante arc probably more than most people to be honest. Um, I think that's kind of I a love the vigilante arc. Yeah. yeah. That people who don't like the vigilante arc. Hmm. There are people who don't like the vigilante arc. I I don't know. I heard. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos that were like oh, I kind of went downhill here. Um, I don't remember who. I, I think there are issues like if there I. Because I've only heard issues with the... Alright, um, adding the digital uh, call. I've only heard issues with the final war arc. I've not heard people arc complain about the vigilante arc. Mm-hmm. The vigilante arc's really good. Yeah. I mean, I believe that, honestly. Um, but I, I hear... I've, I've heard people say that, but we'll see how it is. Who's, who's on the call now? It's the animator. Alrighty. It's the guy with the animator. Am I, am I about to get creamed? Yeah, we can, we can hear you. Alright. Leave set up like I'll just hit join, it'll be easier than sending constant invites. No problem. Alright, before you start, I need to hold on. Uh oh. Alright, you can hear me one more time, yes? Yeah. Yes. Alright. One moment. Uh I need to do something real quick. I'll be right back in like thirty seconds. Okay. All right. Oh shit, this no is how it ends for me. Oh no. He's against me, I'm done for. Oh shit. <laughs> Skid says I have work now, but once I'm off I'll join. Alrighty. Splinter, you're the one that made the, the Origins video, right? God <laughs> Okay, okay, look. It was it was a very stressful time. That video was rushed. I'm working on an ultimate no, I was defense just, no, I was just, for I was Arkham Knight. Just wondering because I felt like I, I I felt like I knew you were familiar from somewhere. <sighs> I know. Well, right, damn. Right. I'm never gonna live right. that video down. Jesus. Okay, I think I could possibly. Oh, we have no hate for ones. Okay. Oh, Later. Um, not talking about your video game when people are talking. All right. I'm sorry. Um, were we talking about Invincible Season 2's animation a while ago? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the person who had the issue with it kind of summarized their problems with it again? Uh, basically, I would say it comes down to art style. I think the art style feels a little bit plain and should be more experimental. When it comes to the animation, I feel like it doesn't use as much weight. And just in general, I think it's been handled much better across other animated shows than this show in particular. So what's your what's yeah. your disagreement? What is your disagreement? You are on the line. Well, I just need to understand. Um, and for those reasons, you think the animation and art style are bad, okay, or? Um, I'd exactly. say, I'd say it mostly it's to me like there's two different kinds of bad. There's bad as in it's actively negative, or there's bad as like it's really flat. Like to me, 
that's how I would describe um, Invincible's kind of cheap looking animation. It, it, it's kind of flat for me. It's not like it's not like Justice League Apocalypse War where there's actively errors in the animation. Um, but it's in this, in particular, I think it's just flat. You know what I mean? I, um, as a person who has experience, well, has dabbled in animation in the past, um, I'll say that the stuff that I've done has, doesn't actually reach the same amount of fluidity as Invincible. And it's quite a soul crushing experience. So I can say that I have a lot of, um, respect for the craft. Um, True. All I, what I can say is that it definitely took a whole lot of, a whole lot of work from my point of view to actually get the animation as qual to the degree of quality as it was. Mm-hmm. It kind of portrays um, a very the whole physics of the animation, the way the characters move. It kind of gives off this way, like it's kind of trying to mimic reality. Like you said, it isn't super stylized or anything. It kind mm-hmm. of portrays a lot of of the physics in a kind of um, kind of realistic way you know and for that i don't really think that there's many like issues with the way the characters move mm-hmm. it's something that i've never and i've never exa- exactly found it very flat myself um because of course they could always move a little bit more but i think the amount they move is enough to actually convey the movement you know i don't really think they need to um give off more than more than they already give to kind of display the animation um, this is going to be a, a random um, cut-in, but have you seen Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1? You know what I mean? Um, if anybody knows, I think they know where I'm going with this. Unfortunately, I have not. Okay. Um, so basically, I, I watched it fairly recently, but the way it makes its punches is... is you know how in animation um, class they teach you how like squish and squash works or whatever it's called? Where like you throw the ball... Stretch, I believe. Yeah, you throw the ball on the ground and then it scrunches up. That's kind of what I wanted more from Invincible's animation, especially its punches, you know? I feel like when it tries to punch, it's like it hits like exactly how it wants to, but there's like no real sense of recoil afterwards or no real follow through, you know what I mean? That's kind of what I'm I'm talking about. Does that make more sense or am I still off? I understand what you mean. I actually feel like the animation when it comes to the fights have a lot of weight especially in that scene in the end of season one when omni man was beating down on mark um that was a scene i was like man this oh is yeah brutal. i've always felt like due to a combination of the actual animation and the sound and the screen shake of course it kind of gave off a lot of weight and possibly with what you're recommending it could give off more weight mm-hmm. but at the same time i don't think what we have right now is really bad could what you're saying make the animation better? Yes, but I don't think by itself that animation isn't in Invincible can call, be called anything worse than good. It's kind of like um, you go to a fast food place, right, and you buy a burger, it tastes really good, but someone else comes up to you and says, yeah, that's a good burger, but I don't, I don't really think it's good, actually, because it doesn't have bacon. And if it did have bacon, it would, be, it would taste better, but it doesn't mean it doesn't taste bad without bacon, is pretty much what I'm saying. What your the recommendations that you're giving could may possibly make the animation absolutely better, but just because that may be true, I don't think what we have with Invincible's animation is exactly bad. In fact, I'd say it's very solid. Hmm. Well, I'd say just in general, um, the animation on the part that you're talking about, Omni Man, like when Omni Man's beating out on Invincible, you're right. It's the combination of the sound effects that makes it work. But I feel like in general, why? most people find it good is mostly because everything built around the animation rather than the animation itself. It's it's the story, it's the sound design, it's the camera shake, it's how it's directed. You know what I mean? And I feel like the, you know, extra animation could be better. Oh, by the way, also, uh, Red Shot, I do not want um, this series to just be an anime. I mean, you can, you look at Netflix's um, animated shows like Castlevania, and I think those are um, handed extremely well. While some of it is outsourced, I, I still think that American animation can be just as good as anime, you know what I mean? Anyway, back to what you were saying. I think there are arguments that one could make that could kind of give off the idea that the way Invincible is animated actually works in its favor. You're right, there isn't a lot of squash and stretch, there isn't a lot of exaggeration like you see in the more high-budgeted shown in anime and all, all that. Well, the whole high-budget moments, I mean. But one could argue that, as I said, it works in a way because... 
as I said in the past, because there isn't a lot of exaggeration with how the characters move, it kind of makes the way all the movement and all that feel less like a cartoon and more like reality. And mm-hmm. I've always thought one of the bigger it grabs about Invincible is the fact that it represents superhero violence in a more realistic way. Mm-hmm. You know, what happens if you actually get punched by someone with super strength? One could argue that since the characters are moving in a way that doesn't exactly have many of the animation qualities, that kind of increases the flair that you can only add when it's in animation because it's animated in a way that, again, is very, very basic, but gives off what it's trying to do. Right. The actual that's actually... That kind of look more brutal. That's, that's say, something yeah. I would say as well. I think the way that they use, like, the... Because they are trying to make it more, like, what... It, it's kind of like the boys in animation style. It's like, when you watch, like, an MCU movie and, like, two super soldiers are going at it or something, they're not really, like, you know, like, limbs aren't snapping, the blood isn't that crazy... But, like, you watch Invincible, and it's like, or The Boys, and it's like, holy shit. It's like, when when you, it's compared to, like, less stylized stuff, the brutality of it, I feel like, makes it have so much impact. Like, when, like, when Mark is, like, he, like, punches down Angstrom uh, from the sky, and, like, the blood splatters on his face, I'm like, I feel that. Like, I, I feel the impact of that. So I'm just like, that's why I don't understand why it's, like, bad or not impactful. Admittedly, I think the amount of blood that was distributed in the end of season two during the Angstrom Levy beatdown was a bit excessive to me. I actually found it slightly comedic. It was still a great scene, but I think it maybe could have gone a little less. But that's mm-hmm. just one thing. Yeah. His blood is probably boundless, bro. <laughs> He'll probably be boundless. Um, yeah. But, uh, I mean, generally, um, I'd still agree with you. I think... I think a, a lot of people, when they look at this, they, they see everything around it and they kind of uh, see... Like, I, I get what you're talking about when it comes to, like, the blood and gore of the stuff. Like, especially, like, Debbie's arm being snatched. Ooh, that, that shit is crazy. That I remember feeling that and, like, my body jumped out of my physical existence. You know what I mean? Um, it's that kind of brutality that, that definitely makes the show more impactful but i feel like you know if there if that wasn't if their goer wasn't there and say this was a kid show for whatever reason i feel like you know that would just be a major diff to the you know not uh, to the animation i feel i feel like it has an advantage inherently when it has that kind of shock value you know yeah and i'm not saying it's yeah to be clear i'm not really saying that the issue is too much blood i think i think gore can be used very effectively to portray, you know, pain and all of that. I think depending on sometimes less is more and that if you use less um, gore in a scene to kind of mimic how it would portray, like, in reality, it kind of gives off the effect better. Like, um, in certain anime, you know, when you cut someone's arm off and the high pressure blood is just spreading out everywhere, it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous, kind of hard to take seriously, but at the same time, if there's less blood, it doesn't leak out as fast. It's, it looks like something that you'd see more if someone actually, someone's arm actually did get cut off. I think that's, I think sometimes when someone gets hit and the, and the blood doesn't exactly explode everywhere, admittedly I've never really seen many people get punched so hard their skulls crack and all of that, mm-hmm. but Manny, yeah, I think using the right amount of blood, which isn't always a lot of blood, even for especially brutal scenes can um is the key to uh, truly making you squirm is what i mean yeah but i think we're kind of getting off the topic of animation right? i don't really uh i think i want to go back to something you said splinter where you're like uh the like without the blood and without like the the shock value-esque stuff the animation would obviously have a dip i think that's true but like that's the point like that's what they're going for they're using that to play into making their animation look the way it is, like, make their fight scenes look the way it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's generally... I, I do definitely uh, agree with that. I think they, they knew that going in, mostly because they, they were basing the stuff off of the comic, and the comic can be pretty gory as well, so they knew that they could take advantage of that. Also, the fact that this is on Prime. Prime also is the same people that did The Boys, so they just naturally have, like, a gory advantage. So, I mean, I definitely do understand that, and they probably do understand that as well. But I feel like sometimes, you know, um, 
we shouldn't be looking just only as that way, you know, we shouldn't entirely be focused on the violence itself when, you know, that's only a mere part of what the animation is, you know? Um, like, yeah, you mean like the other shit other than fight scenes? Mm-hmm. I mean, I still don't really, I feel like every time there's like a, a scene, I'm not like, damn, that animation like sucks. I'm like, it's there's just a lot like, of bad, there's a lot of bad background animation, I will admit. What do you mean? On um, the first season, you could tell like how bad the animation can be, like in the back, in certain backgrounds, especially in season one. From what what I remember, like characters. By that, do you mean yeah. like when we have extras when they use three D models for characters in the background? Uh, yeah. Of that is something that I noticed. There was this one scene during the whole fight with Omni Man. Yeah. Um, Mark's fight with Omni. There was this very glaring moment where. It was clear that the civilians were in 3D models. You know, obviously they were moving way too much for them to actually be 2D hand drawn, take way too many dollars. And it kind of took me out of the moment. I'm like, wow, that, that looks a bit off. But those were very few and far in between for Invincible. I'm definitely, um, definitely vouching for when I say that generally the animation in Invincible is really good. It's solid, is what I would say. I would also say, I think the background art style, like, there's so many shots in the show where I'm like, damn, that's fucking incredible. Like, the, the way they, like, painted the background and stuff, like, it looks really well drawn. Yeah. I just hope that going into Season 3, especially since we're going to get the Invincible War arc and the Conquest arc and stuff like that, that it takes advantage of that blue suit, darker energy, and maybe, like, you know, maybe the clouds will be more darker and stuff. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> You don't want spoilers? Uh, sorry, man. Okay. No, I don't. I haven't read the comics. Stuff. I ignore me. I've only seen the, the cartoon. Yeah. Okay, okay. Stuff goes down in season three. It's going to be great, and I hope they take advantage of that. That's what I'm going to say. So, yeah. So, yeah. That's all, all that needs to be said. So, yeah. All right. Well, you know. I think that wraps up this disagreement. Yep. All righty. All righty. Okay, so I'm going to disagree. Who is the disagreement? All right. I swear to God, if it's great necromancer. Oh man. Oh, SK. By the way, um, me and Yax talked recently, um, and we uh-huh. were, <laughs> and uh-huh. we went over your Batman Arkham Knight defense video. I defended it in uh, real time while he was kind of making points against it. I haven't finished that debate yet. We only did part one, and we're only like 13 minutes in, so there's still more that we can do, and I have to edit some of the things around, but would you be interested in seeing that once the full thing goes out? And and also, by the way, I think I think, I think, I think Yaks, you know, he gets a bit of a bad rep. I, I'm sure he's already worked out his thing with Batnik, you know, they're they're good between each other. I think uh, Yaks deserves a chance. That's what I'm trying to say. That's, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, I'm not caught up on everything. All, all I'll say is I'm, I'm definitely interested in that. I'd be even more interested in, like, a full-on Arkham Knight debate. That's, like, obviously yeah, it's... prepared for a full-on debate with Yax and whoever else wants to join. Like, <laughs> I just want to <laughs> listen. I don't think Arkham Knight will listen. Because <laughs> this is the thing, right? Uh, in terms of things that I would very much love to hear pushback on, Arkham Knight's definitely one of them. I'd love to have, like, full-on in-depth discussions on Arkham Knight and what people have issues with it. Um, same with the Batman, which I don't hear a whole lot of. I hear more for Arkham Knight, so... Um, but yeah, absolutely, um, you know, you can let Yax know I'd be down for a full-on uh, discussion on, the, on those defenses I had uh, for Arkham Major Knight. the Batman stand right here. <laughs> Well, I, I'm I, I'm not guaranteeing that will be a possibility, but I would love to do it on your behalf because I've already defended your video. I'm I'm probably gonna do it again since I thought your video on Batman Arkham Knight was pretty good already. So yeah, yeah. so yeah, sweet. Yay! I'm not not solely known as the Arkham Origins guy. Hooray! I, I, mean, I, I if it helps you, I forgot about it until uh, someone brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good yeah, to see just you. remember. A splinter. No matter how bad the Arkham Origins take, you know, the, city hall was the entire game show. before I had time. What? <laughs> what did you say? No matter how bad your Origins take questions. may have been, at least you didn't give the entire game a four out of ten. That's true. Uh, including the gameplay. You send a friend request by clicking on my name and hitting send friend request. Alrighty. Oh, by the way, who is the animator that I talked to? Um, what's your profile? Orbiton. Orbiton. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> 
Oh, thanks. Yeah. It was a very good talk with you. I, I didn't I didn't expect that we'd have an animator on, which is super sick. So I really enjoyed the the back and forth. Yeah, no, yeah, no problem. I didn't actually. I've actually been kind of tempted to join for a while because you know these are interesting conversations to have. Alrighty, that is the end of the debate. Um, I do plan to come on to another disagreement day. Um, I'd probably like to talk to Cullen about Arkham Origins. Now, don't get it twisted, okay? Uh, this is not the same splinter that we're talking about here because uh, my original video on Batman Arkham Origins was more so about the story issues rather than the gameplay issues. So the story, um, for me at least, is actually some, my second favorite in the series. I actually really liked it. I've really warmed up to it. The gameplay, on the other hand, is where I have more issues with. I like to debate them on the boss fights, the lack of innovation, ooh, Lucas's favorite word, and uh, the overpowered stuff like the bat claw and the shot gloves, um, and how that actually kind of ruins the Arkham system in a way. I also just want to come from the perspective of saying, hey, he said, this is his words, by the way, he says that Arkham Origins is the best in the series, and I totally don't think that. I think that Arkham Knight outshines it in nearly every single facet, but particularly in gameplay. So again, if you could please check out the main channel, that'd be great. If you could check out the fiction channel, that would also be splendid. I love you guys so much. Uh, that count, <laughs> that sounded a bit gay. But uh, just to close this out, what, Colin, what'd you say about the animation? Something, something about... What was that? I don't... <laughs> I don't really know how to, like, refute this. Like, I, I mean, all I can say is nah. -uh. Oh, right. Anyway, they had to bring in another animator to just debate me. I thought that was funny. Anyway, big fan of them. Um, hope to do this again another time. And sadly, I had to jump off because of a situation going on in my house, and I didn't have enough time to stand around. So I had to leave. Um, but next time, if I can, I'll try my best to stay around longer. So anyway, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, let me see. Uh, peace out, my brothers and sisters. Yeah, let's go with that. Stay hammy. Skibbity Ohio Riz. Yacht. Yeah. <laughs>